In this video, we're going to be doing some shop reviews, and I think you're going to find this very helpful if you're in the digital product space or even print on demand or actually even physical products. I think you'll find this very helpful. And I just want to thank one for submitting their shops in the communities tab. I asked a bunch of guys if I can do some review series moving forward. I think that'll be really helpful. We're going to be going over everything from the design, from the different SEO tactics to higher level strategies on how you can scale your business on Etsy. All right. So very excited for this kind of formatting. Let me know what you think about it. And in case you don't know who I am, I'm Brandon. I've been selling on Etsy for almost a decade now. I've made over seven figures in sales overall. And now I want to help people do the same. But subscribe if you have not already. It really help support the channel. We'll go over three shops. And the first one we're going to start with is this one called Art on the Plant by Camellia. First of all, visually, I think it looks amazing. I really like the minimalistic style of how you represent your products. And these are really beautiful prints. I'm not sure if you do it yourself or you license these, but it looks great. So first thing I want to say is you have a lot of single listings, which is great. Whether you just started, I'm not sure what your plan is, but what I suggest you doing, since you put a lot of work in each of these designs, is to create bundles and sets from these single listings. If you've done some research already in this space specifically, in the wall art space, a lot of people are doing sets of threes, sets of six, even sets of nines. Definitely something to consider. You would find ones that are more cohesive with each other. Honestly, these are all very cohesive. So you can literally pick any of these. Imagine if you had all these all using the same similar mock-up and create a nine set of it. I think that'll do extremely well. And even within the nine, you can do sets of three. So that's another three, right? If you think about all the different combinations that you can do, you can create a huge collection of listings. So you can easily boost this 21 listing all the way up to at least 60, 70 listings by using the exact same products without creating anything new. So that's something I would suggest doing right now. And you can also still see which are the ones getting the most views. That way, which ones you want to represent the best in these sets. You can even do black and white series. You can do color theme series, like different sets. But that's just me thinking out loud of all the different possibilities you can do with the existing products that you have. Another quick tip is the SEO optimization aspect of it is to do sections, right? So earlier we mentioned creating bundles and sets. You have those created. You can add different sections here and make it SEO friendly as well. So if there's sets of nine, sets of threes, you want to make sure you add that in the sections here because it does play a role in SEO. And even right now, you can categorize these in different sections. So you got ones that that are more cactus prints, some of them are more botanical. The botanical ones can all be together. The cactus ones category, maybe some slint ones could be one. And another reason why you want to do that is because if someone is interested in this middle one particular, if you're in the same section as this one, which are very similar or this one, Etsy will show them because they know that you've categorized them in a certain way. So they're going to show the customer these ones that are related, depending on how you categorize them. Let's dive into the actual listings itself. One other thing I would say is the keywords is great. I think you're targeting the most primary keywords here, which is perfect. And this is a definitely a lot more specific keyword. Okay, so I guess this is by actual artists from this time. That's totally fine. And the mockups here, I would say if you can add more mockups, it'd be better. You can add up to 10, more the better. You can also add instructional ones in terms of what happens when you purchase it. Is this a physical product? Since this is a physical product, do you want to add an image of how you process the prints? How do you print it? How do you ship it? Maybe things like that. You can talk a little bit more about that just to get more context. There's a lot more in here that you've included with so shipping and things like that. A lot of times people don't even get to that point. They just skim through the photos. So you want to make sure that you have all the information you need in here for the buyer. Also, another one I want to quickly add is for those of you who have really detailed into designs, whether in the wall art space or anything like that, any type of products, it's always good to showcase a close up shot of it. Okay, I can zoom in like this, right? But you ideally want to have an image like this so they can zoom in even more. You can also add watermarks on there if you really want to, if you don't want them to screenshot this. But the reason why you want to do that is nowadays the trend for most, let's say, wall art categories. Everyone is doing very minimalistic tracked art, something that's big shapes, right? Not much detail to it. So if you're doing something different, you want to showcase that. You want to showcase the difference that yours compared to other competitors. All right, next, let's jump into another store here called Retro Letter Store by Modi here. There's only a couple of listings here. I'm not sure if you're just starting out, but I like these designs. I would like it a lot. I think there's a lot of potential here. And I want to just point out a couple of things. Number one is using mockups for your listing photos. So me just looking at the images, not looking at any of the text. I'm not really sure what you're actually selling. Maybe you're doing stickers. Maybe this is a book cover or wall art. Until I look down, see the text that says vintage coloring pages. Now I'm like, all right, now I know what you're trying to sell, right? So something you would definitely want to do is incorporate these in a 
mock-up. So let's take a look if you have them. It seems like it's just the sheet itself. Like I said, I'm not sure maybe you are planning to do that, but something that you want to do is look at other competitors in your space. I just searched up coloring pages. And if you take a look at how people are representing them, the popular now ones, they all use different mock-ups. These ones are definitely obvious because they're like in the black and white. <laughs> Never want to assume you can know that it's coloring book, but these ones are a lot better to notice. So you can see the other coloring books. So it's nice to always get inspo from your competitors. The ones that are doing well, make sure you're only getting inspo from shops that are proven that have worked, have succeeded. And you want to take a look. You want to see, okay, cool. How are they doing this? Perfect. Bestseller. Price is super low, but I wouldn't suggest doing that low right now. But yeah, then you can go into the images like this. But the front one is always cool to have some kind of mock-up so people can visualize it. What happens when they buy something like this? And a place you can definitely check out for mock-ups is Creative Market. It's a really good site to see all the different mock-ups that you can use. And they definitely have ones for this category or just stationary products for anything that has to do with being in the US letter size or A4 lettering, they got it there. So a lot of different styles, a lot of different branding you can check out. I'll now have it in the link below if you want to take a look. Another point for the retro letter store, going back into the competitor researching is not just for the images, but also seeing what else they're doing correctly. And this goes to anyone starting out on Etsy. Competitor research is definitely one of the first steps and also the most important step you want to do to fully understand the category file types they are selling. I get asked quite a bit from people saying, hey, I'm selling this and this. What kind of file types do I need to create? And as much as I can probably help answer these questions, the easiest way to instantly know is just look at your competitors. It tells you right here exactly what it is, what they're offering. And if you want to know more about it, most of the time they'll have it in the descriptions because they want to provide this information for the customers. So for our sellers, we can easily see this. We can do a lot of researching based off of that. All right. So the last shop I want to talk about in this review critique video. Also, if you're liking this, make sure to subscribe. If you haven't already, let me know what you think about it, how I can improve this content. This one is a Three Precious Pandas by Chi. Amazing job. I love the branding. I love the banner, how cohesive it is. So really good job on that. Have your logo here, but also you have an image of yourself, right? It's not a photography one. I think it seems like more illustration based, but Perfect. I see a lot of people have the same image. They put the same logo on the profile here. I personally think it's better to either show your face or show something different because there's no point showing the same logo. It's redundant, right? You might as well show more about your branding using this as a new real estate for that. I think overall, I was very impressed, to be honest. Congratulations on 122 sales. That's amazing. And there's not much to say about it, but there are a couple of things I want to add on top that I can improve a bit better or just suggestions you may want to consider. And something else I want to note is for anyone who is putting the shop title in here, make sure to use relevant keywords, like your primary keywords for your shop you want to add in here. So this is exactly what she did is to add personalized gifts, which is a great keyword, personalized mugs, personalized pillows, personalized printable, these are all keywords that tells you what the shop is about, but also helps with search. Same with things like here in the sections. Okay, really good job. Love these simple designs. I love how all the backgrounds are all cohesive. Let's just get into some of the things I would try to improve on the announcement page. So right now, Tyler talks about more about you, your story of pandemic, getting delayed, excited for 2023. Perfect. This is great. But you can also include keywords and add a little bit more about what you offer because it does play around SEO as well. So we talked about these kind of keywords. Maybe you want to put that in there. And also, if you want more information about about different ways to optimize your shop through SEO and messaging and things like that. What we talked about the keywords here, keywords in the sections, announcement, having a step-by-step -step checklist. You definitely want to check out one of my playbooks, the ultimate SEO playbook from my website. There you'll see everything you need to do to help you rank better on Etsy. It shows you how to research different keywords and titles and tags for your individual listings and things like that. All right, so coming down here, let's look at some of the mockups here. Like I said, these are great. I love these simple designs with the name, the personalized space. Something I would recommend trying though is since these are all customized, I might not know exactly from looking at this. Like I know usually <laughs> this is what it means, this is customized, but maybe you want to try adding a sticker here, like just a label or a sticker that says customizable, personalizable, right? Things like that. Or you can even add the onto the name. So instead of this saying Liam, you would say custom or custom name as what's on here. So people can literally see the design, the font, the coloring, but also know that it is a custom them, right? If you were only to try that, I don't recommend you changing your listing. If this is a winning listing already, I would create a new one, do everything the same mock-up, but change this or add the logo or add the sticker and have them both be live at the same time and test them out. See what's getting a better CTR, which means click-through rate, which one is getting a better conversion, depending on how you do that. But overall, I think this is a really good shop. I wish everyone the best. It's a new year right now, as I'm recording this is January 5th. So I hope everyone had a great start to the new year and I'm very excited for 
for this year for you. I plan on creating a bunch of new content, really helpful ones, and continue to improve on that and see how I can help you out. Yeah, <laughs> that's the end of the video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you have not already and check out my SEO guide, my SEO playbook, if you want to learn more about how to rank better on Etsy for your existing shop. I think you'll find it very helpful. There's a lot of detailed step-by-step -step tips in there that will really help you out. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.